today we're going to look at the Betis campaign, Rome's Scipio brothers strike into Punic Hispania, 211 BC. Uh, this was part of the C3I magazine number 37, which I did an earlier unbagging and kind of looked at the overall components and then did a page through of the magazine itself. I'll put a link to that in the video uh, description so you can, uh, sorry about that, take a look at that and see uh, what uh, what is all in here. But this uh, episode or video is really just focusing on this game. Now, this is a game designed by Dan uh, Forney. Uh, it is a C3i series volume three. Uh, uh, I guess of C3i series games. I assume that's what that's going for. But um, this is based on the, uh, a Mark uh, Herman system that was originally uh, introduced in Gettysburg uh, and now is its own boxed edition in Rebel Fury. Uh, so those two are both Civil War. Uh, but in the middle of those series... Uh, Mark Herman did a Napoleonic uh, version of this, uh, of using this system uh, covering the, the Waterloo campaign. And so this uh, is now covering a ancient Rome campaign. And so it'd be interesting to see how this system translates backwards into uh, ancient times. So what you get uh, if you pick this up is... Uh, you get, you know, three games in there plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Take a look at that video to see that. But as far as this game is concerned, you get the rule booklet. You get two player aids, which are on, you know, thicker stock. You get a large map. And then you get a counter sheet. Now, this counter sheet is not dedicated solely to the Betas campaign. Um, the Betas campaign counters are right here, as you can see there. But then they're also going to have counters for the other three games and then a whole a bunch of other stuff that goes along with that uh, magazine. Um, you know, there's some counters for scenarios. And actually, these right here are a redo of the Gettysburg counters for that Mark Herman game, Gettysburg. But uh, they've done it with the art uh, design that's being used in Rebel Fury. So if you wanted to... Um, update your Gettysburg to the current uh, design in Rebel Fur Fury, you can use those. But So here are the counters for Beta's campaign here, and they are double-sided, as you can see. <coughs> Man, I'm still struggling with my cough here. Then you have the uh, paper map, which is good thickness for a paper map and nice graphics there. You know, I only cough when I talk, so maybe I should just shut up for a while. <laughs> so there you go. There is the map there. So nice map. You've got a Carthaginian victory point box. You've got a Roman victory point box right up here. You've got some uh, turn track and attack moves remaining. You've got a terrain key. And then you've got some a nicely done uh, terrain on uh, on the map here. So there you have that. You have this, um, you get these player aids, which this gives you the sequence of play and the terrain effects chart, which also you know gives you the terrain, movement, combat effects, and any notes. Then you also have a combat summary here, combat resolution table, uh, and uh, night desertion and all kinds of half bribe and bribe and double bribe. You got all kinds of cool stuff here. So this definitely adds on some rules that you would probably not going to find in uh, the Gettysburg and the Napoleon or the Rebel Fury series of games. Uh, let's take a look at the rule book here. Let's go in a little bit more here. Do, 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 do. So this is a, on the back you have the sequence of play and terrain effects chart again, and the rule books 
the page totaled is 24. So 24 pages. It's dual column, full color. And again, this is based on that uh, Mark Herman system. This is uh, Dan Forney's translation of it back to ancient times. So again, I am excited to see how that system uh, is taken to a different uh, time period in different theater. So here's your setup, first turn sequence. There's your setup map where the forces are going to be setting up. Your commanders are uh, these circular discs that we saw there. So these would be these are the uh, commanders here. You can see that. And you've got here's your sequence of play. You have a command phase. You have an organization phase. You have a movement phase. And then you're going to have a combat phase. Now this is. Um, Operational. I mean, when you see words like campaign, those typically are not tactical but in nature. But So this is very much kind of an operational type view of, the, uh, of this uh, conflict that you're going to have, at least in the earlier systems, there were, you know, the leaders basically kind of represented a headquarters and an area of orders or a range of orders of which they can, you know, command the troops. Um, and I imagine that's probably going to play similarly into this system, I would think. Here's all the combat. And even though you see a lot of pages and examples in here, the combat is not that complex. At least in the general series, it wasn't that complex. I can't believe it's going to be that much more here. Then you have an end phase. And this is where you have like the night d desertion, the half bribe and bribe and double bribe, some of those kind of things. So this is probably a matter of uh, trying to see who uh, who's going to stay with the forces. So this is kind of a, another way of kind of dealing, I guess, with the morale or the cohesion of the forces. And there you have it. So that the rules themselves are only uh, 13 pages. And then we have a lot of historical notes, and I really like that. That This is why I play war games, is to kind of learn a little bit about the history and the conflict. So from page 14 to maybe the rest of the book here. No, 14 to 18 is, is uh, historical notes, and then you get designer notes from 19 on. And I think this is where he's talking about... Uh, after playing Mark Herman's Elegant Waterloo campaign, that was the second in this uh, series... Uh, from C3I number 33, I immediately realized this was a perfect game system to portray my favorite campaign from the Second Punic War. So uh, that's what inspired him. You know, the, the Waterloo campaign inspired him to, to use this system. And, and the Waterloo campaign, you know, kind of took um, the, uh, the original Gettysburg, which is more of a tactical focus. I mean, it was on the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, and this system, as I said, really plays better in an operational sense. And so the Waterloo campaign was a little bit more operational bent, and this is more operational bent. Um, and a Rebel Fury, for that matter, and I did an unboxing of that as well, and I'll put a link to that um, in the description down below. That feels a little bit more operational as well. It's dealing with six different battles, but again, this system, I think, feels... Uh, at the very least, grand tactical, if not uh, kind of operational. So there's the designer notes. And then um, kind of breaking down the forces with a couple of charts there. And there you have it. That is what you get with the Betas campaign. Um, looks very interesting. I like this system. This system is not that hard to get into. Uh, I, I, I liked... Um, out of all the ones I played, I haven't played Rebel Fury uh, yet. I just did the unboxing and had to go travel. But um, I did like Waterloo. I, like, I liked how this system played to the operational sensibilities. And so I did like the Waterloo campaign a little bit better than the Gettysburg. Not that Gettysburg is not bad. I, I, Gettysburg is a fine game. But, um, and, and, it, and I like it because it, it presents a different perspective of that battle and kind of uses some different systems that we haven't seen before for portraying that battle. 
But um, I think, again, I think this fits better uh, in an operational sense. So anyway, so if you want to get a hold of this game, you need to pick up C3I Magazine number 37. This is what uh, th that all goes along together with this uh, game. And I said there's a lot in that magazine or in that package. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thanks all. Thanks for watching.